Um, my name is Desi Bowles. I'm an Envision staff member here at UCSD. Um, and I am here with Dean Pisano of Jacob School of Engineering. Hi, everybody. I'm Al Pisano. I've been the Dean since 2013. And before that, I spent 30 years at UC Berkeley. I'm very happy to be here. Wow, that's a long time to be in the UC system. <laughs> Yeah, you get to see a thing or two if you hang around that long. Yeah, so um, many people don't actually know like what being the dean of a engineering school actually means. So would you like explain to people like your roles and your responsibilities? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, if I were sitting in my office, it would be easier because there are actually three props that I keep in my office at the end of the meeting table. And on the left, it's a traditional Chinese golden bamboo uh, sculpture. And on the right, a, uh, a sheet metal fire engine. And in the center, a set of wooden serving trays and on them, some very expensive, I think it cost me a couple hundred bucks, Japanese uh, uh, like tea cake serving plates. So why would I put these three props uh, on the, as uh, why would I put these three props in my office? Well, you know, uh, uh, whenever anything goes wrong, somehow it ends up on my desk. And so thus the fire engine. Uh, whenever the school needs resources, somehow that ends up on my desk. Therefore the symbol of wealth, the golden bamboo. Uh, but mostly what I came to do was to serve the community and help the school be as, as good as it can be. So if you really look at what I do day to day, minute to minute, hour to hour, it's always one of those things. Wow, that's really cool actually. Um, another thing that I wanted to ask was how has this pandemic like changed, I guess, those three things that you have just said? Yeah, well, let's just say the fire engine needs to be five times bigger. <laughs> Uh, the bamboo looks a lot smaller nowadays, but hopefully we'll grow that back to size. And the serving plates have multiplied. Uh, but to be more concrete, um, I, uh, I've never, I never thought that as the Dean of Engineering, I would be confronted with so many simultaneous headwinds at the same time. So we've had to do this incredible pivot uh, to uh, remote instruction that that got started in record time, but you know very well that um, now what you got to do is work out all the small details that uh, the shift entailed. Um, we had to put safety protocols for all the labs in place. Uh, we are dealing with uh, uh, let's just say challenges in the uh, some of the corporate funding, uh, you know, we get a we get a certain amount of research monies from corporations. Some of them are feeling the pinch, so they're going to be scaling back there. But I don't want to make it sound all bad. There are also opportunities in the middle of this crisis. A number of faculty. We must have. We have almost a half a no. We almost have a dozen COVID nineteen projects running. Four of them, I think, really in an advanced stage. Uh, there are a number of. Uh, new things that were funded to enable the school to be more flexible. And, you know, uh, uh, I think half of the skill of being a good dean is to figure out how to take these negative things that happened and extract uh, some kernel for the good and have that be what we carry, carry forward. I know it's probably really tough right now to like figure out what you need to put your attention towards right now because pretty sure it's all like really crazy out there because I know like my boss you know Jesse DeWalt and Colin Zawowski are like really scrambling to like figure out what the new regulations are and like how can Envision serve the best possible like I actually have one of our Envision um, 3D printers at my apartment right now and, and I I'm noticed the spools of uh, plastic <laughs> yeah so I'll be giving like um like a live stream tutorial on how to use a 3D printer for some of the classrooms. So it's it's a really interesting time. 
Yeah. Well, look, there is one uh, there is one priority that always goes straight to the top, and that's uh, health and safety for the students, the staff, and the faculty. So that gets taken care of first, and then with that as a constraint, we do as much as we can, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, that constraint, you know, sometimes is a pretty tough constraint. Uh, and in fact, uh, I, I look to Jesse and the entire crew to help me figure out, how do you have a team building event when you can't convene a team? Uh, and how do you do hands-on ex experiences when you can't put your hands on anything? Now, you've already got one, in, one innovation going right there. Hey, man, I'll just do it here on uh, Zoom, and maybe those will follow along. So, you know, I'm looking for this, let's just say, out of this time of challenge, uh, I'm, uh, I'm expecting a huge number of innovations to come out. So we're going to do the best we can under the circumstances. No, that sounds really great. Now to shift a little bit, um, a lot of students, you know, like in the midst of all this craziness and like just the general like thinking about life, um, a lot of students are really unsure of their career paths and their goals. And I was just wondering if you could like explain how did you get to be the dean of like an entire engineering like top university and like was this your dream job? So uh, yes, indeed, this is a dream. I mean, <laughs> headwinds and crises notwithstanding, uh, it could be a little bit more of a dream job. Uh, maybe cushy, maybe is what I'm thinking of. Um, so first up, yes, this is a dream job. Uh, but, you know, I had to do many other things to get ready for this job, and I had to do things before those things to get ready for those jobs. So I would never dream of being a dean if I hadn't already run uh, a large administrative unit or a large research unit or a large department in the past, and I did those things at Berkeley. Uh, but I would never be ready to do those if I hadn't uh, built up a big research program uh, you know, uh, develop my teaching style so I could win teaching awards and stuff like that uh, so that I would be able to communicate with the people. So I see uh, careers, uh, the end point may be surprising, but careers tend to be things you build uh, one piece on another. And so, I, you know, my message to the students are is make as much of this circumstance as you can despite the challenges because now, one way or another, this is still the step off, this is still the stepping stone into your first job. And there are going to be plenty of first jobs out there. And for uh, for those who are engineers in the audience, you know, my job is to make sure that all these engineers are trained uh, so that they're useful. And for non-engineers, well, come on and hang around with us and we'll help you out. That's really cool, actually. Um, do you have any... I would guess like general advice to students, maybe like a quick pick me up in probably like this interesting, unprecedented time. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I don't know how many people uh, race bicycles or uh, do uh, are competitive inline skaters or whatever. In an era before I was chubby, uh, I used to ride a road bike quite a bit, 22 miles a day. Uh, for over a two-year period, I used to ride a bike to work in traffic. I was that crazy guy that didn't know he wasn't a car. You just go go fast with everybody. Like, so, yeah, because um, I was just going to say, like, um, Professor um, Dr. Alvarado, like, was on one of our other procrastinating shows, which people should also check out. I found out that she gets up at 4.30 in the morning to go on a run. Yep. So, so uh, instead of making that story too long and cumbersome, let me just offer this. Um, what I learned uh, from uh, semi-competitive biking is that you pass more riders on the uphill than on the downhill. Mm -hmm. So when the times are tough, that's when you show everybody your real power and you uh, put extra energy into getting forward progress. I really believe that. I've done it myself. I've lived that way. So uh, the challenges uh, can be very disheartening. And I know that uh, we can put people under duress for a number of reasons. 
uh, I ask that everyone uh, try to remember that this is also an opportunity to do something so wonderful that it would become a resume or a talking point or a point of pride for you for the rest of your life. And I mean that very sincerely. Uh, you have an opportunity now to do something important. Now, not everyone will get that opportunity, and, and I understand how that works. But many of us will. Make sure your eyes are open when it, goes, when it crosses your path and jump for it when you can. So, you know, uh, I do believe that we will emerge from this uh, stronger if we are innovating as we emerge from these circumstances. And so, you know, all engineers are innovators at heart. Uh, you have, you know, it's a wonderful advantage you have. I hope every single engineering student does their best uh, in these circumstances. Well, great. Thank you for sitting down with me and taking time to do this interview. Um, it was wonderful having you and I hope that you have like really great rest of your day. Do you have any lasting remarks that you want to make to the people? So the last thing I'll say is, uh, even though I've uh, uh, broadcast a, a message that, you know, I want you all to be uh, uh, courageous and strong, I also understand that from time to time uh, people need help. And uh, the engineering school will not forsake its people. Uh, we still have all the student support services in place. Uh, so if anyone needs to avail themselves of that, of course, we're still here to help. Uh, one way or another, I think we're all going to get out of this okay. And, and, and I guess the, the last thing I'll say is I'm really hoping that everyone uh, remains healthy and safe. Uh, that's very important to us. Well, thank you. All right. You're very, very welcome. Videos like these are brought to you by UC San Diego and have been made possible from support by makers like you. Thank you.